take an inside look at extraordinary founders and visionaries from humble beginnings who forged a path and transformed the way Hawaii does business. In this special edition of Founders and Visionaries, we take a trip back to the Hawaiian Legacy Forest, a breathtaking koa forest on the Big Island. I was first there in 2012. Three years later, I brought my family back to start our own legacy, and what an experience it was. It was life-changing, and beyond my own personal journey, the story behind and about Hawaiian Legacy has been inspiring. This special edition of Founders and Visionaries is brought to you by LegacyTrees.org. This is a special place. This is a place of beauty, a place of warmth, a place of aloha. E ho kipane mako me kahaha. Mai, e mai, e komo mai ki aina. O ka umiko. We are no longer friends. You are part of our ohana here at Hawaiian Legacy Hardwoods. So welcome again, Kim. So nice to be with you again. Come. You see this big koa tree, look. Wow, look how big it is. 70 years old, approximately, this wow. tree is. Majestic. Thing. Right? Today, you folks are making a difference. You're going to be planting a koa tree so that when you have children, that you can bring them up here and together as a family. So this is our koa. No matter how small a tree is, whether it's this size or, or like the lone koa tree, we're starting to make a difference in the air we breathe. If there is no breath, then there is no life. This, my friends, is life. So if we look at the koa tree, it's like kamehameha. It was Kamehameha's favorite wood because of its strength, because of how it took care of things not only underneath or around, but things that come from the sky like the birds. He really loved his people. He did everything to take care of Malam, his, his people. And like the koa tree, if you look at the understory, the understory of every koa tree is healthy. So it's like a mirror. It's taking care of everything that, it, that comes up. It's a plant unique to Hawaii, to Hawaii's culture, and of course, the history. So when we go on vacation, making memories, plant a tree for your family. When you plant a tree, it'll be here forever. And maybe you all can make arrangements to visit that one tree that we plant as an ohana, as a family. Your memories of your vacation will always be here. So you can either hold a tree or mom will hold a tree. I'll hold the can, tree and okay, you. And you just kind of squeeze it all around, honey. Yeah, this will just to loosen the hole that the canister have on the trees. Is this pretty cool, Aaliyah? Awesome. I guess our kupunas are here and they're going, hurry up, because we're going to give water to the plants. So they're speaking to us right now. The thunder. You hear that? You hear that? Yeah. The thunder. Okay, Kupuna, Ooh. all right, we're on our way. That's our blessing. All around the town. It makes it extra special to hear the thunder in yes. the distance. That's awesome. Within yourself, you can say whatever you want to help this tree okay. grow. You want to wish the tree to be big and strong and be one of God's blessings to everyone in Hawaii and the world, right? You know, the tree is a blessing to the aina, like you and Luke are a blessing to mom and dad. Would you enjoy walking through a koa forest, Leo? Yeah. Yeah? So this is gonna be part of that forest. Yeah. And look around you, honey. All the it's other starting being time. Okay. Perfect. Okay? See, now your mana is in there. Now this tree is gonna go strong and healthy. Come on. No woman.
Right. Mahalo. You're welcome. My head is just full of awesome and magical and life-changing. I just have to thank you for this incredible day and this unbelievable experience that you gave my family. I know this is something they're never going to forget. And I have to say, I have not been on many eco tours in my life, but I would have, I think I'd have a hard time finding one that would be more exciting than this one. The level of service out here is amazing. I, I was thirsty, they gave me a Perrier, and now our hands are dirty and we have steamed, warm, fresh towels. Lavender scented. <laughs> uh, in starting the tours, our initial intent was to create sort of an educational arm where we could introduce people to the value of reforestation. But it also provides a little additional income that helps carry the project through to completion. And carbon's another one of those legs of the stool. There's a really, really special uh, mana or energy about this place. And I've been across most of Hawaii, but even in one day's time, it changes you. What has it been like for you two to be here all these years? It never gets old, I can tell you that. And we see things like even today, there's things that happen today that have not happened before and you never know what to expect. And I think that's part of it. I know from the ecotourism side, we have many people that come up multiple times and the experiences are never the same. And I know that that's uh, in part why this was actually, it's been voted the number one eco-tour in the state of Hawaii, so. You know, Uncle Earl, I really can't describe how great it was, what a moving, humbling, and memorable experience it was to have the sky just talk like that to us and yell at us to some extent. It was a very um, chicken skin kind of movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, Guy, it's not how you can put it in words. It's how you feel in your na'au, how you feel down deep inside of you. That's what counts. It's such a pleasure to have you up here and your family. And I think the best part of it all was watching your children experience this kind of environment. When is the best, best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. Right. When is the next best time? Right now. And they were part of that today. You know, for me, as a weatherman, coming into this experience, not knowing what to expect, just the impact of what we felt with nature, the impact with what they do here, really is gonna leave a long-lasting memory for me. I'm just gonna remember this for a long, long time to come. It was super cool. <laughs> so you guys, Mom could not wait for you to have this experience. What do you think? How was it? I think it was awesome. Yeah. I think my favorite part was the helicopter ride. <laughs> yeah, the helicopter ride. How about you? What was awesome about it for you? I liked the lone koa tree. That was really cool. Yeah. It was so big and majestic. What do you think your friends will think when you tell them about this? I think it'd be pretty cool, especially the part that it started like with thunder and lightning and stuff as soon as we started planning. What would you like to say to the folks from Hawaiian Legacy Hardwoods today. I'd like to thank them just for everything, being able to plant our own tree and stuff. I also want to thank them for making sure that they like preserve all the koa trees, um, especially because they're not as like, they're not as well known as other big causes. So this really helps to bring the population of the trees back up. I feel like I've uh, given my kids a rare opportunity to have some connection to the land and that feels really good and at the same time it makes me feel really guilty that we don't do this more often. <laughs> I'm just glad I was able to produce some uh, significant weather for them to really relate to. Thunder and mist and a little bit of rain. Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> Thank you. Obviously, Don't you cry for me, let me a cold tree.
is expensive. Raising a family, paying for our home, the electricity bills going up, we wanted to find ways to save money. So when we thought about solar energy, we went with a company we could trust. Island Pacific Energy really took care of us. Not only did we receive exceptional customer service, Island Pacific Energy handled everything from permitting to maintenance, and we saved a lot more than we expected. So now we have more to do together as a family. This special edition of Founders and Visionaries is brought to you by Kahala Hotel and Resort. I can see now why Hawaiian Legacy Tours was voted the number one eco tour in the state. And it wasn't just about planting our trees, everything was first class. My kids and my husband can't stop talking about the helicopter tour. It was amazing. Hawaiian Legacy Tours offers several excursion options. One of them is the Earth, Wind and Fire Experience. It's a one-of-a-kind private opportunity to view major Hawaii Island natural landmarks and stop at the Hawaiian Legacy Forest to plant your own Koa Legacy trees. Being a forestry major, I've always wanted to plant trees and be outside and plant trees. So we have here the Akia Kolaau, which is a dry land forest bird and is totally dependent on the koa to live. So it really speaks out for what we want to try to do as a company. And my forestry background always keeps me leaning towards trying to do something ecologically friendly. We are the first and only helicopter company to provide carbon neutral flights for all of our guests. And everyone has a responsibility to live Pono and care for the environment. We take that responsibility seriously. Uh, one of the things we really like to do is get the people out of the helicopter. We want to get them out someplace like this where you get to actually see what's around. Partnering with Hawaii Legacy Hardwoods, now we have the place that we can actually plant a tree. And you can hear the birds singing. It really changes people's demeanor. They get to feel Hawaii. And then you can come back and see that same tree years later. And eventually so, the native birds will... Eventually the native birds will come back. If you're flying with Paradise Helicopters, you'll actually be helping to heal the environment by planting trees, going carbon neutral, and at the end of it, you're gonna have a tie-in to the land that you cannot be beat. Not much gets better than that. The amount of carbon footprint that we leave is offset by the koa trees that are planted here is just really amazing. Our owner, Calvin Dorn, is actually a forestry major and has been here since 1991. And his goal has always been to really foster and steward the land and to really give back and be genuine part of the community here in Hawaii. This land that's given so much to so many for so many years not just about rainbows and waterfalls, but about really giving people an experience that's a piece of Hawaii. The island delivers us these amazing stories and, and this amazing feeling. Hawaiian Legacy Hardwoods is, is a part of that. It was basically a match made in heaven. Just flying over here this morning from Kona, we flew over a vast amount of acreage that used to be natural koa, and it was clear cut for ranch land in the last 50 to 70 years. And you start approaching Hawaiian Legacy Hardwoods, you start seeing the, these little trees that have been planted and we see what's happening, this like rebirth, this new growth. And then you roll right up on the lone koa, which is this magnificent koa tree. And it really brings everything together and gives you that sweet part of the bittersweet feeling. It's kind of a really beautiful thing to be part of and a beautiful way to give back to Hawaii. Um, and it's something that we're very proud of, and it's something that we're very, very, uh, very special relationship with us in Hawaiian Legacy Hardwoods. And so, really, the only footprints we really want to leave is on the beach.
This special edition of Founders and Visionaries is brought to you by Gold Standard. Well, what we're actually seeing is flowering on a, a koa tree that's only about 27 months old. So it's very, very early in uh, the history of a koa tree to start producing seeds. This is where you're yeah. filming those. Are you kidding? No, these are the ones. So, Jeff and Daryl, I really have to thank you. It's hard to believe it's been three years since we've been together up mm -hmm. here in the forest on the ranch. I am amazed at how much the trees have grown in the last three years. I saw pods on some of them already. What an incredible thing you've done in the six years that you've, you've been doing this. Give us an update. We're tired. <laughs> <laughs> to someone who has never been up here, how do you explain what this is? You show them pictures, you tell them what you're doing, and invariably when they actually come up here, they have a whole different impression of the place because it kind of speaks for itself when you're uh, in, in the environment, but it's really hard to visualize, especially for people that are coming from a more urban climate. Jeff, how would you summarize what your mission is? I think the main thing is what we're trying to do is, is create something here that's a test bed that other people can emulate because we're just two guys and, um, and we do joke about the fact that uh, our goal is 1.3 million trees. If it were just he and I doing it, we'd probably hit the goal, but he would be in a walker and I'd be into tens and that would be it. Uh, so what we realized is that the key to expanding this thing is to give it away. And we're finding people that are thinking like us that are willing to work with us on this thing and expand it hopefully on all islands. Fish, my friends. Here's the Four Seasons Hualalai Core Forest. Do you ever expect this would be what you'd be doing now? Um, I think that this is something that is bigger than what we planned, and I think it'll be taken by the next generation to bigger than we can imagine. Yeah. And our job is just like Daryl said, you know, one foot in front of the other, and when we can't do it, somebody else can pick up the baton and continue on. In fact, I, I think that's kind of the um, place that this has grown to for us is realizing that the developing of public-private partnerships and corporate relationships allows you to uh, explore reforestation almost anywhere. I mean, we've talked to people in Chesapeake Bay that are talking about doing this with the American chestnut. And there's people talking about doing it with walnut trees and the pecans and things that had have been greatly reduced over the years and uh, you know some cases it's reclaiming old tobacco land uh, in our case it was ranch land that was being underutilized but you know there's always places where this can fit i just have to take a moment to comment on what's happening now around us is another part of the magic of this place while we've been standing here just this beautiful fog and warm mist has surrounded us. For a city girl from Oahu, this is a big <laughs> thrill. And on top of that, when we were out there planting our trees, you coordinated thunder <laughs> as a drum roll behind us during that process. Yep. That, was, that was some tough coordination. Yeah. Guy Hoggy was like, it doesn't get any better than this. I'm up here planting koa and I there's thunder in the background. Well, this is a tree that's going to be very majestic a tree that's going to benefit from the best weather on the planet. <laughs> when I was here last, you were trying to hit 100,000 trees. I know throughout all of this process, you have had to contend with critics who either didn't understand what you're doing or said it was impossible. How have you handled that? Well, the word impossible gets used a lot. I think impossible is just a really big word that people use so they can stay in their comfort zone and not, not challenge themselves to try and find solutions. I think the forest has been explaining most of it away, and we actually have very few critics at this point. I'm just glad I didn't know it was impossible when we started. There you and, go. Uh, I had somebody standing with me right where we were today, and they said, uh, you won't get a tree in the ground until pigs can fly, was their comment. And Can I add something to that? Sure. If you go up to see the outhouse, there's a weather vane up there, and it's flying pigs. <laughs> <laughs>
We were able to jumpstart this by putting together a tree investment program where people would buy a block of trees for future harvest. And the resource from that sale allowed us to get those trees in the ground, get fencing in, get things started. But the goal was always reforestation. And by getting that initial start, we were also able to plant trees that were for permanent reforestation. And uh, those trees are being sponsored by individuals, one or two at a time, uh, by corporate sponsors that are doing it as part of their uh, sense of responsibility to the environment. And that model has taken on kind of a life of its own. You know, so we're, we're able to expand the diversity of the forest. A lot of those trees are starting to become other endemics like sandalwood and mamani and nayo, so we're able to expand the diversity of the forest. Jeff Wykoa. Um, I kind of feel like I was partly responsible for the degradation of koa because I love koa furniture. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as I uh, had pieces made, I found more and more that the wood artisans were, were taking longer and longer, and I just thought they were really busy. And it turned out that it was just more difficult to find the quality of wood that they're looking for. And as I started to look into it, I realized that if we don't fix it, it's going to be something that's unfixable. Yeah, in fact, they estimate that about 90% of the original koa forests on the Big Island are gone. What do you want to see here in 10 years? What I'm most interested in seeing is the canopy is starting to close on the first year trees and we're starting to bring in more of the other endemic uh, understory species. And what I'm anxious to see is a, a forest where you wouldn't know that there was a, uh, a rangeland in place before you started, where the grass has faded back and the uh, understory shrubs and uh, native ferns are really the dominant feature under the canopy of trees. LegacyTrees.org, along with Keiki Hula, invite you to sponsor a koa tree in the Keiki Hula Legacy Forest for just $60. You'll be supporting the next generation of dancers as $20 of your contribution will be donated to Keiki Hula. These trees tie the past, present, and future together. Visit LegacyTrees.org. Plant your legacy today. On, the only footprints you leave are in the sand. This special edition of Founders and Visionaries is brought to you by Kona Brewing Company. Oh, that's, that's, right there. that's the song I will share it with no other instrument. Okay. okay? Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Now this ukulele, this ukulele was made uh, from four endemic woods that we have here in Hawaii. Number one, of course, is the koa. Koko olau, ohia, and the iliahi. The iliahi is the sandalwood. Yeah. So, take a whiff. Smell it? Smells good. Yeah, you smell good? Mm. That's the Iliahi. Mm. That's the Iliahi. And um, funny, you know, when, when I was playing it, whenever I strum, I get a whiff of the mm. Iliahi, you know. And that kind of goes, oh yeah, <laughs> oh, now, now. Yeah. So people can sponsor a tree, have the experience of coming up here and planting the tree. But there's another way that you've created for them to stay connected to that tree too. Explain that. When we started this from a, an investor's point of view, one of the big concerns was how do I know that my tree is my tree and that no one has uh, been sold the same tree? And so we looked at a variety of technologies and finally settled on RFID tags, which is a, an electronic serial number that you can attach to the tree. And that electronic serial number has allowed us to track all of the history of that tree, both its 
parentage and its care and its GPS location in the field. And because we're able to do that, maps can be generated that show the exact location of every tree and the identity of that tree. So if someone has sponsored that tree and they look at that map and they click on their tree, it'll bring up all the information about that tree. So now with your own GPS numbers, you can actually go online and click in and watch your tree grow. Absolutely. In fact, the tree that you planted, you'll be able to zoom right in on that location and uh, see the, the tree as it is today and, and how it grows over the next years. That's cool stuff. All right. Mahalo. You're welcome. And I know that you've also shared with me, um, not only do people do trees in memory of, but at times you've had people who will bring ashes up and want to put them in the dirt with the tree so that the mm -hmm. tree actually absorbs yeah. you know, the DNA of that person, which is fascinating. It is. A lot more personal than when you adopt a star and you get a certificate yeah. for that. So. And I think one of the, the reasons that this has been so successful is uh, people that donated money to uh, conservation organizations for reforestation, they donate their money, it'd go into a pool, and somewhere, somewhere, people were planting trees. But in our case, uh, there's such a complete link between their sponsorship and an exact tree that there's a sense of ownership or identity with it that uh, that is much more compelling than uh, just donating money to a cause. This is a perfect example of life, that it nurtures us together. And yet, God brought us here to this special place today. That is priceless, that is, there are no boundaries, that is wonderful, thank you. I think what really separates this is, if you think about it globally or, or you know, larger than yourself, and people look at what's going on and they go, oh, deforestation, it's such a big deal. You know, I'm going to make a donation. I don't know if it did any good, you know, that sort of thing. Whereas with what we're doing, they can not only be part of the bigger picture, but if they want to drill down and see the granular impact that they have, they can say, that's my tree right there. I ha I I'll help put that in the ground. And I think that connectivity makes everybody's individual efforts come together. So you kind of get both. You get the satisfaction of saying, that's what I did. And then you can step back and see how it impacts with everybody else's efforts. And Jeff, this initial dream of having these trees and reforestation, you've now found a multitude of ways of expanding what's happening out here. Talk to me about some of the other businesses and what else has come out of this. Oh gee, um, well we've recently expanded into the production of honey and this is the first ever koa honey ever produced in the world. And uh, with that koa honey we've formed partnerships with Kona Brewing Company to create the first ever beer made with koa honey. And we've also got plans to roll out the first ever koa honey shochu. From the outside looking in, most people would say they're, they're not connected, but they really are because everything we're doing here is trying to show landowners that there are economic solutions to putting forests back. In a nutshell, we're trying to provide an opportunity for landowners to do well while doing good. Tell me about some of the companies in Hawaii who have partnered with you in this effort, either to buy hmm. trees or... Uh, we, have, we have some excellent partnerships. Four Seasons Hulalai has committed to a half a million trees. Uh, we also have um, Hagadon Printing, which is the largest printer in the state. More recently, we have uh, partnered with the Kahala Resort and they're making a commitment for 100,000 trees and that's on the island of Oahu. So it's coming to Oahu too? It's coming yes, to us coming, near you. Yes, oh. exactly. And then just recently we were certified as the first gold standard carbon credit in North America. Now you have to explain how those carbon credits work because <laughs> that's pretty cool stuff and very innovative. Trees are a, a really good carbon sink because they take up carbon dioxide, release oxygen and stored carbon. And then the carbon credits, how do those work? So our sequestration helps to offset some of the, the uh, carbon dioxide pollution by other uh, industries. So with the credits, you're basically saying, I know I pollute, yeah. but I am going to pay for something that's going to help clean up that pollution. That's pretty much exactly what, what goes on. Now, see, I understood her. Yeah. <laughs> this was a series it of whistles and clicks. It took me three clicks, years, <laughs> though, of being with you to get it down into one sentence. Ten, very good. But it's brilliant. And what I also love, and Jeff, you shared, is that you have some companies, even locally, that care about the environment
government. And even though they're not polluting, they're interested in promoting and purchasing the credits just to say that we're doing good by our island home. So Yes, and, and the, the whole methodology for, for us doing the carbon is because carbon is a long-term project, a 50-year project, and it generates revenue every year for the next 50 years. And uh, once the forest is in place and paid for, you still have land taxes or fences that are broken or just general repair. We found that annually, the carbon that's sequestered that can be sold will generate enough income for the forest to maintain that forest for three years. So this could push out 150 years. After that, it's somebody else's. We discussed yeah. that it's somebody else's problem. <laughs> Our children's so. children's exactly. yes. problem. Yeah. The problem with um, any large problem is, uh, I think people have a tendency to think that the solution has to be really complicated. A really good example of this is back in the 60s, there was a space race going on between the Russians and the Americans. One of the issues was how do you get uh, a writing utensil uh, in space that can write in zero gravity and upside down. And so NASA hired uh, the Fisher Pen Company to create a device and they spent over a million dollars of R&D. The Russians brought a pencil, okay? <laughs> so the point here is that it does not have to be complicated and the simple yet profound act of planting a tree could very well solve the problems of today and future problems for our children with regard to the environment. And yet the 300,000 trees you've planted and, you're, and you've poured your heart into every one of them, you've said that equates about how much of the problem in the... Based on current statistics, uh, they clear an area that size about every 19 seconds. So Somewhere we have some, in the world. Yes, so we have some work to do. But every little bit makes a it difference. It absolutely does. Mm -hmm. and, and we're a small organization. A lot of times people think, well, if you're small, you don't really have an impact on big things. but. Anybody who says that has never spent an evening in a tent with a mosquito, right? There's a perfect example of how little things can have profound impacts. So, and we're just doing this in Hawaii, a little spot on the map. And we're making, we're making changes here that matter. This special edition of Founders and Visionaries is brought to you by Four Seasons Hualalai. You invest money in things that are perpetuating culture and uh, everything that's wonderful about Hawaii, and you're doing it in ways where you don't even expect to get anything in return from that. One example is the CAPES projects that you're working on, so tell us about that. The CAPE program actually, uh, it started with a painting, and the painting was called the Ahaula, and it was done by Brooke Parker. And Brooke is a direct descendant of Kamehameha the Great. He showed me this painting and he started explaining all the people in the painting. And there was Kamehameha the Great, Kemoku, and he went down the line. It was so mesmerizing to listen to this story. And then when we started looking at the capes and he was explaining how these are the capes and you know, some of them are in museums, people don't get to see them anymore because they're so frail and so old that they even daylight be can become an issue. My understanding is there's a half a dozen people left that know how to do it on the planet. And he said, oh, my cousin knows how. <laughs> and uh, his name is Rick San Nicholas. And so what we did is a uh, year at a time, we are replicating this entire painting. So we've had a few people ask us, what does a reforestation operation care about capes? And the linkage is the feathers come from endemic birds. The endemic birds come from the endemic forest. Without the forest, you don't have the birds. Without the birds, you don't have the feathers and therefore the capes disappear. The first cape was completed and it was installed on Kamehameha Day at the Four Seasons Hualalai. And the idea is where people can be in contact with these things and understand just how important it is.
We're very excited to have this beautiful cape. It's extremely special. I think it's, it speaks to the heritage of the island. It ties in with our relationship with Hawaii Legacy Hardwoods. Every interaction we've had with these guys has been authentic. Something about this project was unique and it, our ability to connect with something that's not just a temporary project, you know. This is something that's going to last forever. It's an honor for us to have the replica of Kamehameha Ekahi's uh, Mahi Ole, which is his helmet, his Ahaula, or his cape, and the Ka'ai, which is his sash. For us to have such a beautiful art piece at the Four Seasons Hualalai is gratifying to me. This feather here, the orange one that we're using, that I'm tying on right now, that comes from the Lady Amherst pheasant. And on the Lady Amherst, there's a very small section on the tail that where these small uh, feathers come from. And the small feathers are mostly black. And of course, with all of the down at the base, and then the orange color is on the, is on the tip of the feather. So a good pheasant would probably yield about 15 to 18 usable feathers, and, and that's it. The triangle right here, just that full triangle, will take me the almost a, almost a day to complete in the orange feather. You know, you don't have to be Hawaiian to see how important it can be in a culture. It's about the art and it's about that Hawaiian tradition and actually keeping that part of the oldest tradition in Hawaii. Ancient Hawaiian feather work, what I consider that being the oldest art form in Hawaii to remain alive so that the next generations can come up and it's not one of those things that is, you know, a used to be. To put something together with natural feathers, with natural colors that would represent the native Hawaiian birds. Doing these pieces like that with all of the work that gets done, that's really a triumph at the end, is to know that the only other ones that exist are in the museum, so. I'm just uh, so ha'ahil, so proud, and ha'oli, so happy to be part of this in, in helping Jeff and his team bring awareness to those that are here and those that come to visit us here in Hawaii. It is special. Mahalo Jeff and his crew. It's not just the details of the cloak and helmet collection that are remarkable. Every effort was made to make this entire display as authentic as possible with the highest quality materials and craftsmanship. For Jeff and his crew at HLH, you know, I really mahalo them. It didn't come from the heart. It came from their na'au. It came from deep within them. Our pico is our center. There is our na'au. And as you, you have this feeling, this passion that starts within your na'au, then it starts heading up, correct? So their next, that next stop is your pu'uvai your heart, then they'll have this warm feeling, this can happen, this is why we want to do it. Then it goes up to your poor. That's where the ideas come. I thank them because of what they're doing. They are making a difference. So did it come from the heart? 
They touched it, but it came deeper from within them. Yeah, you know, that's the truth though, honey, right? It's the truth. It's like saying aloha. If you say aloha and it comes from here, that's only a word. But if you really share genuine aloha, it comes from deep within you. And that makes it even more special. So yes, they have made me smile. So I mahalo Jeff and his crew. Think about great places that you know. Certainly gonna think of somewhere that has a great spa or great restaurants or maybe a great golf course. Walai, we have all of those things. And then of course you've got the Four Seasons service. If you love what you do and you surround yourself with people who also love to do what they do, it can be pretty uh, infectious. Ren Spooner, wine traditional since 1956. This special edition of Founders and Visionaries is brought to you by Miss Hawaii Organization. just to be full of koa trees and unfortunately they were destroyed but for me it's about and for this entire project it's about rebuilding that forest rebuilding life and giving that life to the state of Hawaii something that is so special because koa it represents strength but it also represents life I don't view Miss Hawaii as a title to be worn or a place on a map because it's so much more than that it's a living breathing culture and the things that make it special are the koa forests, the lehua blossoms. So to be able to be a part of that and that legacy is what makes being Miss Hawaii so special and so important. So today I'm here planting 53 koa trees, one tree for every estate and every girl competing in the Miss America Scholarship pageant. So I'm here to make the, our trip to Atlantic City carbon neutral and sharing my aloha with every single state. So I think that's really special. We drove up and it was really misty and it was so beautiful. And you see all of these koa trees and you see the chance to put something into the earth that you know is gonna grow and you know is gonna prosper and you know it's gonna give life and restore a forest. So for me, it's really special to know that one day I can come back 10, 20, 30 years from now and maybe bring my children to that same spot and see the thing that I've planted, the tree that I've planted and watch that grow. If you look at a koa tree, Everything in the understory is alive and healthy. That's why Kamehameha decided, you know, if anything, this was gonna be the plant that would be him. Because he was strong and he took care of, of his people. So this is the koa tree, Kamehameha, and this is his people. And everything around him was strong and life. Yeah, exactly. All of our nieces and nephews and uh, graduate from high school, they get a tree. My friends who their children are getting married, they get trees. What more special a gift can you give to someone that you really care about than the future of a core forest? So how can you not come here and help engage in what this organization has started to do? I think when I went up and I got to experience being in the forest, it's this sense of pride and it's this sense of mana and aloha that just, it resonates. And it wasn't only a learning experience, it was a spiritual experience. 
to feel something that you know has been around for generations and will continue to grow for generations. You know, in all honesty, I think it's, it's impossible to fully articulate that feeling when you step out and you feel that mist surrounding you and the chanting in Hawaiian, you get chicken skin because it's unbelievable. And you're really feeling this thin thread of connection that connects you to the world around you and that you have the opportunity to be in a place that's so sacred. So I recommend for anyone that has the opportunity to come here to come and do this. You definitely won't regret it. It's life changing. When you work with Hagadon, the only footprints you leave are in the sand. This special edition of Founders and Visionaries is brought to you by Hawaii Fresh Farms, the hula and the koa tree, symbols of our islands rooted in the aina. And like our keiki, these truly magnificent koa forests are inspiring. This right here is one leaf. These within it are called leaflets. So when it's ready and it wants to go to maturity, which it's starting to right now, it starts letting these go. And from these branches, these phyllodes come off and turn into leaves. The leaves actually at one time were a part of the branch. And that breaks off and turns into what's called a phyllode, and then you have these leaves, which essentially help create the watershed project for the tree when it's doing this kehau weather right now. All this moisture is coming through the air and it collects on these leaves and it drips down to the drip line of the roots and, and that's how it feeds itself. You see how it's kind of vibrant green underneath the tree, a lot more so than outside? That's because the tree itself pulls nitrogen out of the atmosphere and puts it directly into the ground. So everywhere where you see koa trees, even with young growth ones like this, it's a lot more vibrant green right underneath where the koa tree is because it's actually feeding the grass. The seeds, when we collect, separate them from the pods, the mother tree number is always recorded on the drying trays along with the date in which they were put in to dry. And we let them uh, air dry at 30% humidity for uh, about a week. And uh, once they're, they're dry, then they get weighed. So you have a total weight of the batch. We take a subsample, we count those and weigh them, and we're able to determine the number of seeds that's in each one of those batches. And from there, they wind up going into a modified freezer that operates at uh, fridge temperatures. And they're stored in uh, sealed mason jars with uh, bags of desiccant in there to keep them dry. And that allows us to uh, hold these seeds indefinitely. I mean, certainly for five or 10 years with no problem. That's a yes. lot of seeds. They've yeah. collected well, how many so seeds? We're a little over 300,000 so far. So there's enough seeds that were collected this year to plant everything we've planted in six years. Kind of cool, actually. That one right there has the very first tree we ever collected. Once the seeds are uh, separated from the pods, and they're brought into the seed lab where they're further dried and again associated with the mother tree number. How they're processed, when they're put into dry, the total weight of seeds, and then we do a subsample, count that and weigh that, and from that we can calculate the total number of seeds. This is a big, a heavy produ producing tree. It was over 14,000 seeds off of one tree. When we outplant them, we can tell well, what mother tree provided the seeds for any particular tree. Uh, the thing about koa that makes it kind of unique is that the seed, the, the flowers are not uh, mature as male and female at the same time. So the pollen that pollinates any given flower has to come from another flower. It can be on the same tree, but it's not going to be from that same flower. That was one of the main reasons that we brought bees into the project in the first place. These other two over here, this one is um, Uhi Uhi. 
No way. The seeds pods, seed pods right here. There's only about, what, three dozen of these trees? Yeah, pretty rare. in the world. So this is the first time in two years that this tree has given off seeds. And um, it's very rare because this is a very special tree for us. And if you think about it, these seeds are sort of like a metaphor for life. Life, you start out in this pristine little package and then you get covered with dirt and the trials of life occur and you're strong enough to overcome and these beautiful little seeds will become a magnificent tree. LegacyTrees.org, along with Keiki Hula, invite you to sponsor a koa tree in the Keiki Hula Legacy Forest for just $60. You'll be supporting the next generation of dancers as $20 of your contribution will be donated to Keiki Hula. These trees tie the past, present, and future together. Visit LegacyTrees.org. Plant your legacy today. This special edition of Founders and Visionaries is brought to you by Rising Sun. Every time I come up, I try to make sure that I come see my son. And what I did was I took some of his ashes and I spread it around the tree and inside of the hole. So I'm, I'm looking at it in a very positive way that his DNA still grows and it's growing in this tree. I'm sure if other people would like to do that, I think it'll give it life once again. Look how thick it's gotten. One, one, Strong tree, and it's still getting stronger. Aloha. Now the Makani, the wind, is speaking to us and for us and for those who came before us. And so from here, you see the quality of life, the changing stages, the history, the beauty from the peak of the Mauna to the ocean from which we came. gift that we have after all these years to bring back life to this place. Do you feel it? I feel it. This Omao is actually 
exactly what Jeff had envisioned is a legacy. <clears throat> to be standing here is more than just a moment. This is actually something that yeah. I think not only are we here, but they are mm -hmm. here. everyone Every is here. Yes. here. They are here and I can feel them. I know they're here. So to be a part of this is just, there is no words. There is nothing that could explain what this moment means. So mahalo, mahalo to Jeff, mahalo. Yeah, and a beautiful. Mahalo for this beautiful thing. I love to ask, if we, we call this hill, if you don't have a name already, so if we just call it Pu'uki Aloha, because truly this day of Aloha that we have celebrated with that love, but it's a deeper kauna, and we'll leave it at that. I think this is a beautiful way to know our hill. Pu'uki Aloha for all of us. Yeah? The depth of what it means uh, goes beyond. But well, you know, in Hawaiian, eha, four is an important number. Mm -hmm. You're giving four Hawaiian people, and I can only speak for myself, as someone who never thought that as a Hawaiian, that we'd have the privilege, I as a Waikine, would have the privilege to be even doing anything like this. Here we are in the moment, celebrating something so powerful that goes way beyond us. Mm -hmm. So how is this? Amazing. Uh, it is, yeah. look at this. Mm -hmm. This is like, I mean, amazing. So the koa that is beginning in another way. This is the blessing. This is the blessing. This is exactly what we're supposed to be. Exactly. <laughs> All the kupuna have blessed us because this uhi by the makani, the kai, everything that surrounds us, oh, we are embraced. We carry this wherever we go. So whenever you need a moment of strength, remember this moment. This is your kua. This is our kua. And so, let me a kua tree. <laughs> Let me a koa tree. Don't you cry for me. Let me a koa tree. Don't you cry for me. You touched all the people with your music. Oh, it made sense so much noise. Mahalo. Na aina, mahalo kia kua, na kupuna, na ohana, na meho aloha. <laughs>